I sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord. I sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord. I sing faith. Faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lord. Oh gosh, how wonderful is the Lord. God is faithful. He is so faithful. He cannot fail. And I'm not just saying it. You know, a lot of us, we like to use a lot of I call them religious words. What is religion? Things you just get you so you say them without actually considering what you're saying. So when I tell you God is good, I'm not. I, I, I'm considering it. I'm taking it to, into cognizance. The very word good, and I tell you God is good. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. He's so wonderful. He's just so wonderful in every way. He's truly a father and he's God. What is so amazing that God indeed is a parent, is a father, and is loving. He cares for us. Anyway, this evening I just want to quickly share with us what God dropped in my heart concerning this month. And before I go into that, I just want to draw our attention to the peculiarity of the month of July, especially this first day. You know, today is Wednesday, and it's in the evening on this side of the, of the world. I don't know, maybe you're just entering or you're ending it. But on the side of the world, this is the, it's in the evening at about 9 o'clock. And um, this is the first day of the month of July. And if you look at it, Wednesday is the middle day of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, middle. So you have three days. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Number three. One, first day. <laughs> the unity of the Trinity. Four, new beginning because it is the fourth day. Seven, the seventh month of the year. And the middle of the year. Seven stands for perfection. I think these numbers are significant. And those that the Lord speaks to, the prophetic people that God speaks to through numbers, I pray that God will reveal the meaning of this and you'll be able to expand it to us in Jesus' mighty name. I just believe that God is about to do a new thing. He's moving in a new and mighty way. He's doing a new thing and he's revealing it. He's not hiding it. He's revealing it to his children. As many that will open their ears and eyes and say, yes, Lord, and we are willing to go with God. God will show you a new thing. God is no longer interested in the old pattern and in the old style. He's doing a new thing and we just have to flow with him. So yesterday, uh, 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 as we were just praying, God began to drop this thing concerning the month of July. In my heart and i just thought that i should just share it with us i started to write it but I, I i just realized that it is better if i if i if i do a video and i just give god all the glory because if not him that gave me the order to do videos i i don't think i will have the courage to to to, to do a video you know i'm not really that kind of person but i just give god the glory for the boldness he has given me to do so many things now, and I'm so grateful to him. To him be all the glory in Jesus' name. Yes, I just want to read the word that God gave to me concerning the month of July, the seventh month. It says, the month of the establishment of purpose. The month of the establishment of purpose. That means it is a month in which God will begin to establish, you begin to confirm the purpose of which you are. The purpose for which he has called you. The purpose or the reason for which he called you. God will begin to establish it. That means he will begin to confirm and cause you to work in it. If it is a new thing, he will begin to confirm and work in it. If it is something that he has called you that you will be working in, he will begin to even enlarge it and expound it and take you into new areas. So I'm going to read from the scriptures that God dropped in my heart. And that's 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 25. And I read straight away. And it says, Now, O Lord God, the word you have, which you have spoken concerning your servant 
and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as you have said. This is David. You know, if we read from the beginning of that chapter, it is David giving commands to Solomon, telling Solomon all that God has told him, how he wanted to build a house for the Lord. And the Lord said, no, he couldn't because his hand was full of blood. And God had promised that he was going to give Solomon that he, David, will have a son. So God promised him a son that will be king in his place and that this son will have peace all the days of his life, all throughout his reign, that God was going to give him peace, make sure that the enemies do not fight against him. And David was just explaining everything to Solomon and giving him all the instructions because he has everything ready already to build the house of the Lord. So he was just telling Solomon. And at the conclusion, David turned to God and said, Lord, Lord, now, O oh Lord God, the word, the word you spoke to me concerning me and concerning my household, my son, he said, now, Lord, establish it. You said, and David was about to die. So he knew what he was saying that God should establish the, the word which he said he was going to do. God should establish the word which he said he was going to do. The very thing that God promised to do, you know, in the life of his children, in his life, even after he's gone, he was asking God, Father, do them, establish them, bring them to pass, confirm them, begin to bring them to expand. And another verse God, scripture God gave to me is in uh, Psalm 119. That wonderful chapter in the Bible. Psalm 119 verse 38. Psalm 119 verse 38. And I will read. And it goes this way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. Here it is again. The psalmist, David, telling the Lord, establish your word to your servant. Who is committed to fearing you? Because all the days of his life, David feared the Lord. Now, if you are committed to fearing God, what does it mean to fear God? It means to follow in his ways. It means to follow and recognize when you miss it to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Because David was not perfect, yet he was a man after God's heart. So it's not about you being super holy. It's about you having the heart to serve the Lord, having the heart to obey his word. And the Lord will give you the strength and the willingness and the ability to live for him. So David was saying again, Lord, establish your word. Now, the question is, has God spoken a word to you? Have you been prophesied over good words? Have been spoken to you that this is what the Lord is going to do in your life? God will do this, God will do this. Listen, this is the month of establishment of purpose. Have somebody told you that you, God has called you into something, this, that, that, that. This is the month that you begin to tell the Lord, Father, establish your word that you spoke concerning me. Establish your word. Cause it to begin to expand, to begin to come to pass. Cause it to begin to come to fulfillment. But there is a question that I want to ask. Before you can begin to ask for the establishment, you must first of all discover your purpose. You know, a lot of people say they don't know their purpose. Or a lot of people just say, oh, they are just in this world. They are just enjoy. They are Christians. That, and they just go through life. By chance. So they begin to think about being lucky. Everything happens to them by coincidence or by chance. Or by chance they were there. Or by chance they were there. There's nothing that they can tell you that it was the Lord leading them. They don't even know. Are you one of such people? Today I want to tell you. You must discover your purpose. And you say, oh, I'm not called to be a pastor. You don't have to be called to be a pastor or a preacher or anything for you to discover a purpose. You have a purpose. And you say, how? Listen, we, our body is full of different parts. So also you as a child of God, you are one of the parts of the body of Christ. Because the Bible says that we are the body of Christ. And if you look at your hand, look at my fingers now, right? They all look like this. And you may think that, oh, there's a particular finger you hardly ever use. So you are, can you take it off and say it is no longer needed? Try taking it off and you see how needed that finger is. That it's seemingly inactivity is actually his function in your life. Okay? It's actually his function in your life. So don't think that because that, that figure is there doing what it's supposed to do. What has God called you to be, do? Because it's true, we have all been called to preach the gospel, going to the world and preach the gospel. That is a general message like... 
All this our body must move. Everything must work together so that we can move and begin to fulfill other specific functions. What is the specific function you have been called to do? You have to discover your purpose according to God's specific plan for you. And how do you do it? You have to go to God and ask God to give you his blueprint. God said it to David. God can say it to you. Because if you are without a purpose or you do not know your purpose, you are like a cut loose raft without direction, driven by every wind of chance, without an anchor. And then one day you end up, if you ever come home empty handed, nothing. Like I said to people, don't be a number in this life. Put your mark in heaven. So that when you get to heaven, your name will be on the billboard. This finger can be so important that you can insure it for a million dollars or whatever. Don't be a number. Find out your purpose. You have a specific purpose. You may be this wonderful finger that is in the body of Christ. You have to find it out and begin to function properly like that finger so that the entire body can function well. Because when you are not doing yours properly, it affects the entire body. So you need to find out your purpose. You need to find out what God has called you to do. You need to find out where God has placed you in the body of Christ. You need to find out what you are here on earth for. Because there's no man, there's no woman, there's no child of God without a purpose. There's no child of God without a specific thing that God has designed you to do. It may be that you are to join a group. It may be that you are to hold somebody's hands up. Remember, Joshua started off by being a servant to Moses and ended up being the leader to take the Israelites. The Bible says that Joshua, Joshua stayed in the tabernacle when everybody has gone. He only stayed there. He slept there. He slept there. He never went back home. No wonder he knew how to follow God. It might be that your own is to hold up the hands of somebody else. And that is where God has placed you. Hold it up. It is a place of honor as long as it is what God has given to you to do. That is your purpose. Find out how to do it well and do it with joy. You may be one God has called to be praying for a particular minister or praying for a particular family. That is what God has called you to do. Begin to, it is a purpose. Because when you pray, maybe God wants to use that family or that person to accomplish something. Listen, you are carrying that person that will carry millions. So don't look down yourself. You are carrying one person, but that one person is going to carry millions. So who is greater? The foundation stone is always greater than the entire building. Don't you know that? If the foundation is not well laid, the building cannot stand. And nobody, when you go to see a house, do you see the foundation? No. You see the beautiful outside. But the foundation you don't see. But without the foundation, cannot stand. So if you are a foundation, don't aim to become the roof. You'll be in the wrong position. What is your purpose? You have a purpose. Find it out. And when you find your purpose out, like David, begin to tell the Lord, Oh, Lord God, oh, my Father and my God, establish your word that you said concerning me. Now, Lord, begin to bring it to pass because this month I'm going to be telling the Lord every day, Father, establish your word. This is the month of establishment. Lord, the doors you said you will open for me in ministry, in my life, in marriage, in, in, in family. Father, open them. Cause my eyes to be open to see them so that I will not miss them. Father, direct my path, my footstep. I know the things you have said to me. So I'll begin to list them out to God and say, Lord, you said you would do this. Father, begin to do it. Father, you said you will do this. Father, begin to do it. I know them. I wrote them down. Write whatever God is telling you about you down and begin to bring them to the remembrance of God. Don't just go about in life empty. Don't go about in life looking for, going, you know, some people say, going to and fro, just looking for um, any opportunity day. No, that is not it. Follow God path. It will not be anywhere. He will direct you in the paths that you should go. He will tell you to turn to the right. He will tell you to turn to the left. He will tell you at what point to stop? 
He's still the God of precision. He's still the same God that knows where your enemy is camp against you and knows what the enemy is saying and he will go and bring the news to you and tell you this is what you should do. I'm telling you God is doing it right now in my life. He's showing me what the enemy is doing, what the enemy is planning. God will reveal them to you through dreams. I believe some of you are already experiencing that. God can even speak it to you. God can open your eyes to see. God can send somebody to tell you. It is his way of showing you. Follow the direction. Just like I'm telling you today. Whatever purpose God has given you, begin to remind God, this is the month of establishment. This is, even all the words that I've heard, prophetic words, all point to us one thing, that God is redirecting us, redirecting us. If we will submit to God, God will direct us right. God is opening new doors. God is doing a new thing. And that we should not be careful or mindful of a COVID-19. You know, I really love what, this scripture in the book of Daniel chapter 3 where uh, 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 the three Hebrew children said to Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, king, we are not careful in this matter. We are not mindful. You want to throw us into the fire? Go ahead. We will not bow. This is the moment you begin to determine, just like you are asking God to establish you, you too will begin to establish yourself and determine not to compromise your stand with God. If you, if you have been compromising, don't compromise anymore. Make a decision and say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to stand by you all the way. I'm going to stand with you and I'm going to stand for you. No matter the cost. No matter the cost. You're going to take it, Nebuchadnezzar. Do your worst. You're going to say to yourself, if I die, I die like Esther did. Did Esther die? No. Did the three Hebrew children die? No. Well, maybe you may die, but you see, you would have stood for God. You're not going to die. God is not going to... <laughs> Unless you are a matter for God. In any case, you are not going to lose out. You never lose with God. You are always a winner. What is your purpose? In this month of establishment, in this month that God is releasing. You know, I was listening to a man of God. Wonderful. God bless him. Prophet Akinfiawa, God bless him. He's such a wonderful person. God bless him. I pray that an increase upon his life. I respect him as a prophet of God. And he told the story from the book of Matthew where Jesus said, I think it's Matthew 17, if I remember well, Jesus sent to bring, um, uh, 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 sent Peter and John to get, get that uh, donkey for him, the mother and the child. And the prophet began to explain how that in this period, God is going to set loose both the mother and the child. It was really, it's really powerful what God is saying to the body of Christ. You know, uh, some of the things he said were also, uh, 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 he said, God said to tell his people not to be distracted by COVID-19. Because COVID-19 is designed to distract the children of God. And, and I, I don't I, I identify with that because this period, find out that different things are happening, making you get distracted from the focus on God, God is showing you to do. Don't be distracted. So the first thing you must discover your purpose. Begin to ask God, stay focused. And begin to ask God to establish your purpose. Begin to ask God to establish his word concerning you. Begin to ask God. And if you are out there, you are not born again, you do not know Christ. Then you do not even fall into this category. That would be the saddest thing. That would be the, yeah, it's the saddest thing not to be born again. I cannot imagine my life without Christ. You know, of a truth, life in all its ramification, enjoyment and whatever you may call it, is in Christ Jesus. The best life you can have is in Christ Jesus. And if you want to have a life that is full of life, I mean, you are able to wake up in the morning with a smile no matter what. You look at tomorrow, there is hope. And not only tomorrow, you look at eternity. You are not rotting in hellfire. fire. You're going to be with Christ. You're going to be in heaven, a beautiful place. You need Jesus. You need Christ. And the Bible says that there's no salvation given anywhere else by which man may be saved. So it doesn't matter. You say, oh, I don't believe. It doesn't really matter. It is what the word of God says. I don't argue the word of God. I say, oh, I have an opinion. Sure. I respect that. But do you know what? I have found this Bible to be so true. Every single word. And every day, this God keeps proving himself as real 
and as true in my life. So I don't have any reason to doubt it. I don't. And I don't even want to. I don't even... This is the only God that there is. Because he himself, I am the Lord. There is no other before me. So you need Jesus. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because that's what he is. He died for you. He loves you. He came to give you a purpose. So that you don't just live this life and be a number. And then you pass on. So, and you say you don't know where you are going to be. I know where I'm going to be when I leave this earth. For me, death is not an end. It is a door to glory. Death. If death comes before Christ, if, if, if I have to leave this earth before Jesus comes back, before the rapture, death for me is a door. And it's going to be, <laughs> I have run the race, I have fought the fight. Death for me will be a door. I will walk through that door with joy, knowing that my master, my savior, is on the other side waiting to take me home. Waiting. I'm going to go straight to that place of glory. I'm not afraid. I do not fear. I'm not uncertain of what is lying after this life. I know what is lying. Jesus is on the other side. And all that is said is on the other side. I am confident. Do you know why he has proved himself here on earth? Is there any reason why I should lie about the after? So my dear, I just want to say to you, if you are there watching me and you do not have Jesus in your life, it is time that you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's so simple. The book of Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 says, If you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess with your mouth, say, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. If you believe that Jesus came to die for you, and you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior, surrender to him. From that moment, you are saved. You say it sincerely and you mean it from your heart. From that same day, as you invite him into your life, he becomes your Lord and he becomes a walk with him and he begins to teach you. Oh, as a newborn baby, it's so wonderful, it's Christ Jesus. He just takes you, it's so sweet, you know, like a newborn baby, he will just, he just cocoon you and you will so enjoy life. You suddenly discover so many things. You discover your purpose. And if you're out there listening to me and it's like you've given up on yourself or you've turned back, Come back to the Lord. The Lord still loves you. He has not cast you away. He loves you. This is the month to return. If during COVID-19 where everybody was locked in and locked down, you didn't make peace with God, you can make peace with him today. You can return to Jesus today. He still loves you. And if you are there, you are still on burning. Keep on burning for the Lord. Keep on igniting others. Keep on doing what God has called you to do. Ask, don't become religious, I beg of you. Allow the Lord to take you to new levels, to new realms. Allow the Lord to do new things for your life. So if God is establishing you, you already know your purpose and you are in it. And when This month, God is going to take you to higher level, wider level, cover greater ground. Just open yourself to him and allow him to do what he knows to do best in your life. In the name of Jesus. So with that, I just want to conclude as we share a word of prayer with everybody watching. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, I've just shared your word with everyone that will listen to this video by your grace. Lord, I just pray that you minister through this video to every soul in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the only one that can show us our true purpose because the Bible says that we have been made for your pleasure and you know for what pleasure you have made us. So Lord, I pray for everyone watching, listening, Lord God, and just wonder what is their purpose and Lord, you begin to reveal their purpose in life for them. And Lord, for those that know, you begin to establish them in this month, perfect them in this month of perfection, in this month of establishment. Lord, begin to enlarge their coast in the name of Jesus. Take them to higher heights and as many as are not saved that are watching, Father, I pray that your word of salvation will come to their heart in the name of Jesus. And if you're out there, you just want to give your life to Christ, you can just briefly say this with me. Lord Jesus, I recognize that without you, I am lost. I recognize that you came to die for me. So Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. I confess I have been far from you. I've been a sinner. Forgive me all iniquities. Jesus, wash me clean with your blood. And accept me into your kingdom. Come be my Lord and my Savior. I surrender to you. And Father Lord, as many as will just pray this prayer in whatever form, Lord, you know. You know their heart. Father, thank you for receiving them into the kingdom. And I say to you, you are born again. 
and the Lord is with you. So, I just want to conclude with this. Find out what your purpose is. Ask the Lord to establish in your purpose. This is the month of the establishment of purpose. And the Lord bless you as you say this. Remember, your life is not a life of chance. God is not a chance. God is no luck. He is God. God bless you and thank you for watching. Amen.